Hey y'all, Tawana Michelle here, Narcissistic Abuse Recovery Coach, Mental Health Therapist, and Certified Trauma Therapist. And today we're going to talk about triggers. What are triggers? We hear that word a lot. What does that really mean? And I'm going to share with you guys some ways that I've learned to deal with triggers differently. So to start with, what are triggers? Triggers are not just anytime we get upset, there's a stimulus, there's an event, there's a person, place, or thing or something that causes an emotional reaction from us. That is not a trigger. That's just a basic human response to something that is displeasing or upsetting. So that is not what a trigger is. A trigger is when you find yourself having sort of an overreactive response to something emotionally that is not warranted based on what is happening in the moment. And that typically means that something unresolved is being activated, typically something traumatic that we have repressed or suppressed and bottled up and stuffed and, and avoided. And it can get triggered in a couple of ways. It can get triggered by reminders of that traumatic event. It could be going to a place that reminds us of being in that moment. It can be an anniversary of a traumatic event. It can be a smell, maybe someone that was harmful or abusive to you wore a particular type of cologne. Maybe they had a certain drink. It could be sounds. It could be so many different things. It could be music, songs, anything that reminds you of a difficult moment in your life um, can be a, a, a trigger. It can also be a relational dynamic. And if you have had interpersonal trauma, attachment trauma, if you have been the victim of narcissistic abuse or any type of um, very hurtful and harmful experiences in relationships with other people, you'll find that certain types of relational patterns and dynamics can be triggering for you because it may feel the same even though it is not. So you have these things that are actually happening that remind you of something that is still unresolved. Triggers activate unresolved wounds. Triggers activate unresolved trauma, things that still need to be healed. And what we tend to do for our own survival purposes makes total sense is to try to avoid those painful reminders, those painful feelings, because it does not feel good. It feels intolerable. It feels unbearable. It feels devastatingly painful. And so we try to avoid that. The more we avoid these thoughts, feelings, and memories, the more we are just prolonging our healing and also reinforcing the need to be afraid of it. What I'm going to talk about today will be the things that I have learned for myself through my own personal experience. So the first thing that I really learned that is super important is to not avoid the triggers. Trigger is an emotional flashback. You are feeling as if that event, that, that traumatic event is happening in the moment. So yeah, you don't want to expose yourself to that if you don't have the tools to deal with it. Once I learned the tools, I discovered how important it is to not avoid those triggers because those triggers give me an opportunity to recognize work that still needs to be done, things that are still painful for me and unhealed, things that Maybe I've been working on healing, but it's still there and it's coming back with a little more intensity than I would like. The second thing that helped me with triggers is moving past the fear of the pain associated with the trigger or with the event. Because it's not so much about remembering and feeling, it's about how unpleasant, how painful how gut-wrenching and soul-wrenching that feels. I had to learn to sit with that pain a bit and develop an emotional tolerance to it so that I was no longer afraid of it because I knew two things. One, it's just a feeling and I'm going to move through it. I always do. And secondly, there's really nothing to be afraid of. There is no harm because I have the tools and, and I wasn't going to completely spiral. But there's nothing to fear. So once you discover that these painful emotions are just emotions, you move through it. It's not a permanent state. 
It's nothing to be afraid of. And because I was no longer afraid of feeling the pain, I was also no longer afraid of the triggers. Another thing that I did was allow myself to gradually expose myself to the feelings and the memories and the, and the thoughts and the pain. So gradual exposure happened um, in, in therapy and it happened on my own time when I was doing some journaling, when I was doing some reflecting on traumatic events that I needed to face directly. I gradually did that. I built up a tolerance to that. I paid attention to how I was feeling when I was faced with these memories. And if it felt too overwhelming to me, then I would pull back and I would slowly and gradually increase the time that I would spend reprocessing that memory, feeling the feelings associated with that. And not only that, most importantly, changing the beliefs that I had developed as a result of those traumatic events. In no way are you to do this on your own. You need to see a trauma therapist. I would recommend that to help you specifically with this trauma work. Another important thing I learned about being triggered is that there's more work to be done. It's a lifelong journey for me. It is a long process, lifelong, I believe, of not, not really the healing. There's healing phases of recovery and there's growth. You can learn so much and that's where the life-changing work comes in, in the growth stage. So as I get triggered by things, I move through it more quickly. I reflect on it. I, I go back to that space and usually there's more grief work to be done. It feels like grief is never ending at times. You know, it comes back randomly, comes back when it's triggered. Most of the grief work is done on uh, grief related to what I lost within myself. And the growth part of that is regaining it back, reconnecting to myself, giving myself back everything that I feel that I either lost or never got to begin with. And that's self-love work. That is self-worth work. That is reparenting type of work. Finding new meanings associated with painful events. All of that, I think, are opportunities that come from being triggered in this growth stage of recovery from trauma. And lastly, another super important lesson I learned is that these are moments when I need to have compassion for myself and I need to soothe myself. It doesn't mean that, oh, I'm relapsing, I'm regressing, all this work I've done and it was pointless. No, it just means something's coming up for you. Notice it, feel it grieve it, and most importantly, soothe yourself, nurture yourself, be extra kind and gentle to yourself, have compassion for yourself, pour into yourself. And that feels so amazing. So I just wanted to share that with you guys. Thanks for watching. Give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already and share this out with anyone who you think may benefit from it. And that's all I have. Thanks so much for watching. Take care.